Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr N, where I perform different demonstrations and explain the science behind what we're seeing. Because this episode is being filmed on my birthday, I'm going to stick with the theme of past birthday episodes as I explore fire and fire extinguishers. Let's check it out. All of the activities this week involve fire, so you will need an adult to supervise you if you are performing these at home. For the first activity this week, I am just going to explore what a fire needs to burn. For this, I have three heatproof plates, some blue tack, three candles, a small spray bottle with water in it and an empty glass. The first thing I am going to do is set up my three plates by putting a small mound of blue tack in the middle of each plate and pressing a candle down into each of these. Now those are set up, I am going to take a match and set light to each of my three candles. Now that my candles are all lit, it is time to explore what a fire actually needs to be able to burn. I am not going to do anything else with the orange candle now that it is lit, I am just going to leave it to burn. So let us turn our attention to the blue candle right in front of me. With this candle, I am going to take my small spray bottle of water and I am just going to start spraying water onto the top of the candle and watch what happens. You will notice that after two sprays, the candle was no longer burning and after another couple of sprays, the wick was no longer orange. So now, I am going to turn my attention to the pink candle on my right. With this candle, all I am going to do is lift the empty glass and slowly lower it down over the top of the candle and watch what happens. So what is fire and what was I actually demonstrating in this activity? Well, fire is a chemical reaction between oxygen and the substance being burnt. However, there are some requirements that need to be met for a fire to be able to start. First of all, there needs to be some sort of fuel which can be ignited, that means set on fire. In the case of this activity, that fuel is the candles and the candle wax. Secondly, that fuel needs to be able to get hot enough for a fire to be able to start. I made them all hot enough by using a match, but then by spraying water onto the blue candle, I made it too cold for the fire to actually be able to continue and that is why the flame went out. And the third requirement is that oxygen needs to be able to reach the flame. By putting a glass over the top of the candle, I stopped oxygen being able to reach the flame, therefore because it was starved of the oxygen, the flame could no longer exist and that is why that candle went out. So why did I not do anything with the orange candle? Well eventually, that orange candle is going to burn itself out, it is going to run out of fuel, so it was just used as a demonstration that fuel is required. But when that candle gets right down to the bottom, we know that the flame is going to go out, there is no more fuel left there for it to burn. So now that we know what fire is and what allows it to burn, let's look at how fire extinguishers are used to combat fire. Some fire extinguishers contain water, and as we have seen, water cools down the flames and helps put out the fire. Other fire extinguishers contain chemicals which get in the way of the chemical reaction and stop the material from being able to burn, and this puts out the fire. And there is a third way that fire extinguishers can be used to combat fires and that is what I am going to look at in this activity. For this activity, I am using a glass bowl, a candle which I have cut down to be shorter than the glass bowl, some baking powder, a tablespoon, some blue tack, a cup of vinegar and some matches. First, I am going to set up my bowl by putting a mound of blue tack in the middle and pressing the candle down into this, just like I did with the blue tack on the plates previously. Once that's done, I'm going to sprinkle a couple of tablespoons of baking powder round the edge of the candle, making sure that the base of the bowl is covered in about a quarter inch of baking powder. Now I'm going to use a match to light the candle and let it burn for a few seconds. Now that it's been burning for a few seconds, I'm going to pour the vinegar into the bowl and watch what happens. But when I'm pouring the vinegar in, I'm being very careful to make sure that none of the liquid touches the flame of the candle. You 
You will have noticed there that the baking powder and the vinegar reacted and foamed up and after a short time the flame went out. But what was actually happening in that activity and how does it relate to fire extinguishers? Well, as we've seen, baking powder reacts with vinegar and in fact the baking powder reacts with any acid. When they combine, this leads to the baking powder foaming up and producing bubbles of carbon dioxide gas, which then pop and release that gas out into the inside of that glass bowl. As that reaction was taking place, the glass bowl was gradually filling with carbon dioxide. This was stopping oxygen from being able to get to the flame. And as we learned in the first activity, flames need oxygen in order to burn. And that is why the flame went out on that candle. The carbon dioxide was stopping oxygen from being able to reach the flame. This technique is also used in fire extinguishers which contain pressurised carbon dioxide gas and when this is sprayed on a fire it stops the oxygen being able to reach the flames and therefore the flames die out just like the flame on my candle died out and it sounds like my orange candle is dying out right now I can hear it fizzing away beside me and that's just a demonstration of when a fire runs out of fuel the fire will eventually die so if you can cut off its fuel source you're going to be able to stop the fire. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons to stay up to date on all future content. If you would like to learn more about how candles burn and to learn some cool tricks that you can do with them, I've put a link in the description to a video I did before, Science Magic with Candles, for you to check out. As always, I would like to take this opportunity to answer any science questions you have about any science topics at all. So feel free to email me at stemwithmrn at outlook.com and I'll get back to you with answers to your questions. You can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here and I've added links here to the other STEM demonstrations I've done so far, here to my STEM career interviews and here to my robot review videos. This has been STEM with Mr N exploring fire and fire extinguishers. Thank you.